<clears throat> my parents were always really big on like education in general my whole life and not like a like traditional education right <clears throat> even when i started making more money than like you know the teachers themselves and things like that they still wanted me to go to school and go to college and get a degree i think that was like you know their life's dream was to see their kids graduate from college um because that's the culture in india you know people in india go okay let's move to america and we can raise kids there and they can go to college and you know the the whole people don't realize this dude people don't realize this they say that um you know all this stuff is like like college and all this stuff is like a scam it's just a business yeah you want to know who the one of the primary demographics that they market to are third world countries they go come to college in america graduate from college and that's a guaranteed you know successful life and they they market this as like as like the the savior of of humanity and so you know my parents both grew up their whole lives in india being told repeatedly over and over and over again the same way kids in america are told but even to a stronger degree that graduating from a college in the united states is the best course of action on how to have a successful life and so yeah my parents were always super into academics they put us into uh uh you know preschool when we were like two and three uh up until like pre-k and we did kindergarten pre-k and kindergarten all this stuff and like we were doing all stuff and tutoring and tutoring along with these things from a very very young age up until when we were like adults like the tutoring did not stop it never stopped throughout our entire lives we were always doing tutoring no matter how many times we like pushed against it and there were a myriad of tutors who would like come over to our house really early on but um the first tutor i remember the name of was zane atawala and this dude he was ismaili that's crazy looking back at it now because um nair used to work at zane zane atawala literally he was charging 20 dollars an hour per kid and started out small it started out like you know me Ferhaz, and like five other people right but over time there would be like 25 30 30 kids in one room you know and let me let me just let me do the numbers real quick so let's say he's doing 20 dollars an hour times 30 that's 600 dollars and he's tutoring for i'd say like four hours a day um every single day five days a week so that's times five he was earning twelve thousand dollars a week tutoring and he was like some fucking like high school kid or college kid or whatever that's how much he was earning and that's crazy because there's so much potential money earning potential if you're in like a small you know immigrant community or religious community and you have a good reputation for tutoring it's so easy to earn an insane amount of money really really early on and now there's like this place called my eye lab and all these people like get there and he has like 10 15 of these uh franchises and they're like eye doctor places and they sell glasses and contact lenses and all that stuff and you go there do eye checkups and stuff and he owns he's like the owner of this entire franchise or whatever and Nair actually used to work there doing accounting for one of the stores this dude Zain Atawala is mad mad successful and he used to tutor us which is a really weird coincidence i've noticed everybody who tutors people who gets the experience of tutoring not teaching but tutoring there's like a huge proponent of successful people that do it like i just found out yesterday taylor swift used to tutor kids and things like that and i somewhat tutor kids a little bit but i never really got into it into it you know <clears throat> anybody that i know that was really out here tutoring a lot was crazy successful later on in their life maybe that's what like should actually be marketed here instead of going to college 
tutor kids around you. But, um, <clears throat> man, this guy was ridiculous. He was making so much money. And I thought, you know, $20 an hour, it never occurred to me. I was like eight or nine years old at the time. This dude was making hella bank. And I didn't even know that, like, you know, when, when this other fat dude was like, oh, I'll charge $200 a month. I thought that was a lot of money because I heard $200. But, dude, that was nothing. And then this, um, shit, I forgot her name. It started with an A. I think it was like Miss Anita, Anita or something like that. Anita. Miss Anita, that's what it was. No, that's not what it was. She was charging $250 per month per kid. And she basically did nothing. You would go there and do your homework. But that's how all these tutoring places were. You'd go there and do your homework. Um, until you got to like SA2 tutoring or, or like an actual institution for it. Um, then they actually taught you. But other than that, all you would do is go there and do your homework. And, you know, she had like a bunch of TV screens in there and things like that. And she would do SAT tutoring, but that was like in her basement in her house, three-story house. It was like a super nice basement that she had. And uh, I would sometimes go down there and, uh, you know, talk to the high schoolers. Like, I remember one time, sometimes you had to go down there because there's no space on the top two floors. Dude, it was, it was huge. It was huge. Like, she ran a fucking mega tutoring operation. And she was also a smiley, I believe. I remember down there, there was like a U-shaped table that I sat on next to the other uh, high school kids. It was like three cafeteria tables, like all put together in like a, in a, in a U. And at this point, like, um, I was like, I was good at math. I already explained that in the middle school story, which I'll leave in the description. But yeah, at this point, I, I was starting to lose my passion. But one of these, um, one of these people, I, I talked about it in my high school story, this dude, Samed, um, and this dude, Nick on the bus, we had like a little thing going on for like a, for like a week, for like a week where it'd be like, oh, really, who can learn the most digits of pi? And so I learned like 60 digits. And at the time, I think I only knew like 40 or 50 or something like that. And I was down there. And I was talking to one of the high school, like the girls, and I always like, she was uh, next to me and I'm like, oh, here, I could say the digits of pi. And she's like, okay, say it. And I, I wrote it and then I read it to her as she was reading it and she didn't show me. And she was like, in that moment, I'll never forget that. Everyone was like silent and, um, cause they were all hearing me do it. Everybody was like going silent. And the moment I said the final thing. She like put the paper down. She like slammed down. She's like, this kid can accomplish the world. That shit was crazy. She was super hot, dude. But I mean, like I was in like, when you're in like fourth or fifth grade, every 10th grader is hot. Okay. It doesn't matter how they look. But yeah, that the feeling I got from that was amazing and next level. It wasn't like the feelings I got from when I was younger, but you know, compliments when you're the younger you are hit way, way, way harder. You could really change someone's life with a single compliment when they're like 10 years old, you know? But I got a lot of tutoring stories actually, because I used to go to this place called Score, I think it was, or whatever. I remember being super fun. We just played games all day. And uh, Faraz was so much faster than me in like the progression. There was like a progression thing on the wall. They'd put your names on there. And that really pissed me off. Um, and then give us like magnets and stuff to put on our fridges. That shit was so fun, dude. I miss score. That was so, so fun. And then I went to Kumon and that sucked. You know, I went to a thing before in between score and Kumon. There was one thing I went to and that sucked, but it was still fun compared to Kumon. Dude, Kumon was hell. And I went to like five or so different Kumon locations through over the years. And I went to... Uh, this place called Aloha, which um, I'll give a hot take for people, you know, a lot of Asian people. Dude, you go to Kumar and Aluma and it's almost all Asian people. So because, you know, the culture, because these colleges will market to them. They'll market this dream in their movies and in their music. They'll market this dream to them. And so if you can relate and you've been and you know about Aluma and Kumar, particularly if you're Indian, you know about Alo about Aloha. Here's a little hot take I have, which is Aloha, Aloha is worse than Kumon. 
Because in Kumon, you can kind of slack off. And like these like minimum wage kids who grade your papers, they don't have the mental bandwidth to make you work if you rebel. But Aloha, they really try to teach you. They try to get you to learn the abacus and all that shit. They try to, they rely on results, actually. So they'll force you to learn all the useless information so that they can tell your parents that you learned it. And, you know, now you filled your head, your head with more useless information and you have less space for the shit that actually matters. But the main place I went to was C2. And a lot of you guys might know the place. Um, there's another place called like Sylvian or whatever. So, so whatever, it started with S. But like Slytherin or some shit. But C2 was the place that I spent most of my time in. Um, their logo sucks. It looks like an apple. Well, I mean, it did for like the first 400 times I saw it. They plastered that logo everywhere, dude. And see, the C2 experience when you go is is really a hit or miss, depending on the tutor that you had that day. Um, so, and this is the case with a lot of these institutions that are too big to actually pay attention to what they're teaching you, where they get some college student who did a good, who had a good SAT score and they'll go, okay, you teach the kids however you want and occasionally we'll walk around uh, so that way, you know, you get scared and you feel like, you know, um, you don't want to slack off, otherwise we'll call you out. But really, it's nothing. It's an empty threat. Um, but yeah, and they only hire these college students for like a year or two years at most. So, uh, you know, that way they don't pick up on the actual culture of the place and, and they don't realize that you actually can slack off. But the teachers, sometimes they'll make you do work. Sometimes they, it's it's hit or miss. It's hit or miss. But... A lot of kids started going to C2 very young, like in elementary school, a couple Asian kids too. Um, if they have like older siblings in there or if, you know, the people that work at C2, you know, they just want their kids to go there for like daycare basically. I started in sixth grade. It was the first year of middle school. And this is weird because, you know, there is a curriculum for little kids that they have, but... The like 90, 95% of all their resources are devoted to SAT practice. There was hardly any curriculum for me. Um, and they had like worksheets and things like that occasionally, occasionally. But the thing is, Faraz would go for SAT practice. So my parents thought like, hey, why not just send Afraz along with them? Because whenever we had tutors, they would tutor both of us and they would cater their lessons for our grade levels. But the problem is for a place that's entirely devoted for SAT practice, but that also will take your money if you want to send your little kids there. It's not a good idea to all send the little kids there, but I had been, you know, I had been going to the same tutoring place with Furhaz my entire life up until that point. So, and I didn't go as often. I went on Tuesdays and Thursdays, two hours a day. Furhaz also went on Saturdays and things like that, and he went for longer and, you know, schedules changed a lot throughout the years. Mondays and Wednesdays, and sometimes there were like Fridays and things like that, but the old C2 location was like 20 minutes away from us, and that one was a bit chiller because I was younger and, you know, they didn't make me do as much stuff. Um, for us, would drive that old 2005 Lexus ES330 that became my car, my first car, the hand-me-down. Distinct memories of listening to Jay-Z and Frank Ocean, Holy Grail, and shit like that. Listen to the Money Trees by Kendrick Lamar and Al Faro and and that sort of by Travis Scott and that, those kinds of things. You know, I remember when I first heard Upper Echelon for the first time. I was like half asleep. I never heard anything like that in my life. I mean, I heard things like that, but in like memes. I never heard someone take it to its like full extent. You know, like that's MLG culture right there, taken to its extreme and actually done well. Someone made it an unironic good song. That was crazy. That was when I was like, damn, Travis Scott, who the fuck is this? Anyways, they made a new location um, closer to us. And it's it's by like this Kroger on Sugarloaf Parkway in Duluth, Georgia. And now it's not there anymore. Now it's gone. Now it's something else. Now it's like a fucking CBD store or something. Um, and I remember when I started going... It was like the whole area was totally different. There wasn't that Brazilian wax place next to it. They started building it, started constructing it as I was going. 
And I remember a lot of cool people in the beginning, you know, like Mr. Herschel was really cool. Um, he was the new guy at the time. And now all these tutors basically don't care about like the job at all. All they did was get a good score on the SAT, you know, go like, okay, I want some part-time income to earn some extra cash while I'm in college. That's all they're doing. And now this shit, dude, this guy was earning like $15 an hour is my best guess. However, the students paid 40 to $55 an hour, depending on how many hours you bought there. Like if you bought hours in bulk, I'm going to buy 400 hours in bulk, you would get a discount. But the lowest it would go to would be like $38 or something like that. And my parents, dude, they bought me so many hours, dude. So many hours, like a record number of C2. I'm sure they probably have me in their fucking records. Like the executives probably have me in their records of like, oh, our highest paying customer of all time. This one random kid. And dude, I'm thinking about it. Like, imagine what we could have done with all that money. Just imagine. We literally spent tens of thousands of dollars on tutoring in this one particular place. Like my parents spent people's entire college tuitions on a middle schooler getting tutored by people who don't care about their jobs and then quit. So every time I ever formed a connection with any of these tutors, they would just leave because they like, what the fuck business do they have over there? Right? They hate that job. Who the fuck wants to do tutor people in SAT practice, teaching them useless information that they're not going to need for the rest of their lives. I remember there was this one Asian dude named John. He wanted to be a pilot. Like he had real aspirations. I remember this one other Asian dude named Andrew and he was a fucking loser and he was all academic and he stayed there for so long and I pissed him off so much because I never tried um, and nobody liked him. Nobody liked him. I remember this weeb girl. Uh, she was like fucking 400 pounds and she would go out and like cosplay and shit like that. And uh, she was pretty cool though. We had a lot of laughs and sometimes I would bully her because she's a weeb but or because she had an English degree, which is like totally useless. She was, she was pretty smart though. She picked up on the fact that like, if you want to get me to do something, just tell me stories. And she would tell me all kinds of stories. She would, like the story of Oedipus, oh, that was hilarious. Because it wasn't in the movie format. So when she said it out loud, like the way she remembered it, we were just laughing our asses off as to how like funny it actually was. She told me a lot of dark stories and the dark stories were really, really funny because of the way she would say them. I really liked them. Like she told me about the, she told me this one story about this dude who like got on a sled and like tried to slide down a mountain into a tree to like kill himself. But instead he just crippled himself for life and made things so much worse for himself. And he couldn't speak so he couldn't tell anyone to like end his suffering. That one was really dark, but it was also really funny. And she also gave me the adjective Afrazali, because my full name is Afraz Ali, A-F-R-A-A-Z space A-L-I. That's my full name. So she combined it and made it A-F-R-A-A-Z-I-L-Y, because adjectives end in L-Y. So she said, Afrazali is your adjective. It's the adjective for me. So for example, if you do work and not try and put it off as much as you possibly can and, you know, make jokes and still manage to pass in the class, you're working very afrazily. And <laughs> that was her example that she used for me. Um, there was one other cool English teacher who walked weird. She was only there for a month um, or something like that. She, uh, like one of her legs was like, like a cane kind of or something. I don't know. I don't remember these names, dude. I'm, I'm bad with names. However, I remember Katie. Sorry, Miss Katie, which they would get Miss Katie, but I would still call her Katie. She was so cool, dude. She was the coolest one. She was one of those girls who was like, she broke out the matrix. And she was like one, like you feel, you feel like they're really close to your age, you know, even though I was like in like seventh grade and she was like in college, she was super immature. And she would always bring me candy to keep me awake. Um, and I learned a lot about like the human body by like 
even the thought of sugar would, you know, I'd be falling asleep. I'd literally be in the process of falling asleep and the thought of sugar would wake me up. So it was super interesting. It was like a little science experiment I got to do on myself. And she got these, um, like, like cat sticky notes. Um, you couldn't even write on them because they were all like colored. So it was like totally useless. And she would just like stick them around the building. They were like little ninjas. And, uh, I'm not even joking, dude. Those stayed up there for like three years. In fact, if they didn't convert the place into like a CBD place, they'd probably still be there. And we talked hella, dude. And yeah, she was hot. You guys know people like that. You guys all have seen girls like that, you know? Even sometimes those like really young uh, high school teachers, like Katie was super cool. She was definitely my favorite tutor of all time that I've ever had in all my tutoring stuff. And she got in a lot of trouble too. And uh, man, let me tell you about getting in trouble. So the director, Miss Han, aka Miss Monica, aka Miss Monica Han, which people would call her all these three different names like interchangeably. Holy fuck, dude. She was the stereotypical, like she spent the whole day Every single day, like, patrolling the place, making sure everyone was quiet and working. I fucking hated her, dude. She would, like, check people's school grades and, you know, meet with them and plan SAT practice. And, you know, by all corporate measures, by all corporate measures, if you were an executive for this company, she was a great director for you. She ran the business well. She made it profitable. But for us, she was the devil. She never let us have any fun. It was so annoying. Even the tutors were scared of her. I remember Katie would like, Katie would literally keep watch. M Miss Katie, I'm going to call her Katie. And whenever she saw her, whenever she saw Miss Miss Monica coming our way, she'd be like, it's Monica, it's Monica, act like you're working, act like you're working. And uh, I was a bad actor though. I think she saw through the act. And I started to go there in the first year of middle school and I stopped going there literally after I was done with high school. Even after high school. Well, I mean, not really after. I still would have... We still had hours left. To be fair, I wasn't supposed to be done with high school. I got kicked out. We had bought enough hours for me to, you know, go through there uh, up until, like, you know, the last two months of high school. But because we had paid for the hours, I still had to go. Because apparently you couldn't refund the hours. Which I think is fucking bullshit. But there was no reason for me to go there. And... Even still to this day, I stand by this. My parents told me like, oh, when you grow up, you'll thank us for this. Well, I'm grown. It's been five years. And I realize now that I was right all along. Not completely right, but I was still more right than wrong. C2 was a massive waste of time and money. And my parents wasted the most of it. Like, I was a C2 veteran. That's what people called me. Because after a certain point... You know, people, people, some people would stay there for a long time. Some people would stay there for a little amount of time. People who were smart would come, realize how shit it is, and then leave. But me and, and a few other students would outlast the tutors, you know? Because the tutors, they'd come and go. And some of them would stay for longer, like uh, Mr. Andrew, who was the math guy. Uh, I'm remembering his name now. Uh, did I mention it earlier? But yeah, he was that fucking loser that I said who was, like, good at math, but he, everyone fucking hated him. And every, every, you know, set, like, uh, um, set of tutors that would come would represent, like, an era of the place, right? Like, the second to last era of the place was with the Weeb and with Katie being there at the same time. And that was the best era of C2. Um, but at a certain point, enough eras had gone by where... Literally every single person in that C2 had stopped coming to C2. Faraz was a C2 veteran. Bro, I was like the fucking overseer. I was the watcher of C2 from beginning to end. I had not only lasted longer than every tutor, I had lasted longer than every student up until that point, and every, the person that worked at the counter, and even the fucking director. I went to C2 while there were three different directors. 
the, the, Miss Monica Han was the first one. She'd been there the longest while I was there. Then she quit or retired or whatever. And there was another one. And I stayed for her entire stay. And then there was another one. From the time I started up until the time I was 17, there wasn't a single person in that entire building. The security, there wasn't a single person in the entire building, in the entire organization who had lasted there as long as I had. I lasted longer than the fucking building. So yeah, even Miss Monica's like 10 year old kid who had gone there from like the earliest time that I was going there up until like very, very near the end, he was going to be the real veteran. He wasn't even going there anymore after Miss Monica left. Not even one. It isn't even veteran at that point because a veteran is someone who's like been around so long that they can have some. No, it's like I was the oldest person in the world compared to the veterans. Like literally every single human being on earth who had ever been born before me would all be dead. And that was like the analogy. Like it's crazy to think about. Like it was really profound looking in the situation and being like, why the fuck have I wasted all of this time? Why would my parents do this to me? But yeah, completely new set. I was completely alone. And it was like invincible, you know? It gets lonely when you know you're going to outlast everyone there. And over time, everyone around you just keeps coming and going and coming and going. You're the only one that stays. God fucking damn it, dude. That's what happens when you get parents who are smart enough to be incredibly rich and pay for these things, but not smart enough to realize how much of a scam these things actually are. It's a, it's a, it's a brutal combination to have. And if you have anywhere near that combination, you're going to be put through a, a hell of a time in tutoring and your parents are not going to let off no matter how much you tell your parents, it's such a fucking waste. Stop doing this. Stop wasting your time and money and my time and, and not my money, but my time with all this bullshit. It doesn't matter how much you do it. They're going to push you to do it. They're going to push you. And only when you turn 18 and you can legally run away from home and, and get your own place will they finally, you know, and they won't let off the gas. Literally, my mom still tells me to this day. I'm 22. I'm about to be 23. I should basically, you know, college is out of the picture for me. And she's still like, please go to college. Please go to college. Even if you do one class a, a year and you graduate in 10 years, please go to college. She still tells me that. She's still in this mindset. She still has that, like, the, the idea of college being this, like, you know, grand, holy thing is still... Has, still has like a chokehold over her entire mind state. But yeah, I remember on the last day, um, I asked for the paper of all the tutors that I had because I knew that like, if I ever did something like this where I recap my memories, I would be able to remember like the tutors and uh, it would jog my memory and I'd be able to remember any of them. I didn't get a paper. I got a stack. There were like a dozen names on every page and I looked through it and I didn't recognize any of them. And that was the one moment in my life where I felt like being bad with names was a detriment. I never felt like it was a weakness or even a bad thing, <clears throat> except for in that one moment. But yeah, near the end, I got, I got a, a bit more freedom. Um, I would get to, you know, sit around wherever I wanted and you know, I would sit in the places in the little cubicles where there were no teachers and things like no tutors and stuff. And I would leave the place early and go get ice cream from Kroger, um, where the other Katie, um, or not the other Katie, the other, the Kate, Kate from school, who I mentioned in the high school story where she worked at and things like that. But yeah, that was, that was C2. There were highs and, and there were lows. And I remember every little square inch of the place. You know, when you go to a place for that long um, and, and you remember where all the little like thumbtacks on the floor are and everything. And yeah. Near the end, we actually did 
my family referred Nair's family so that we can get free hours. You know, we can get a discount on some hours. And Miss Monica knew immediately by looking at both of us. She was very experienced. She was old. She was like, you know, if, if like, like the uh, owners of the company of C2 probably loved her, dude. Because she was really like on point. She clocked in and got to work every single fucking day making these kids have a miserable time. And she could tell from past experience that like both me and I are in the same class. That was going to be a mess. And the schedule kind of, you know, fell through the cracks in the beginning where early on, you know, after like two sessions that he did, um, we went to, we went there and we looked and we actually had the same tutor one day for one session. And, uh, like two minutes in of, of the thing of us, like cracking jokes and stuff. Miss Monica came in and was like, oh, shit, I fucked up and, and just noped us out of there and put me in a different tutor for that day. But yeah, later on, uh, something was like in the system was like in like however they manage the schedule. It was in the rules of the system for like me and Naira cannot end up in the same session. Like that was part of the thing. And we never did. We never did end up in the same session ever again. Those two minutes, though, those two minutes of glory. That was fun. And that was just one of those days where, where Miss Monica was just a little bit less active. She just slipped up, you know. But those kinds of days weren't recurring. And she never made that same mistake again in, in any regard to letting off the gas and being strict on us, me and I. And, and I also tutored kids as well. Um, not in C2, but like, you know, here and there, starting from the time I was like 10 up until when I was like 17, but I didn't make anything out of it, but I still did it. And I was good at it. And I was better than any tutor I ever had, except for maybe Katie for some people. Um, I don't think I was as good of a tutor to some of the people that I was the worst tutor for as much as Katie was for me. Um, but for every other tutor I've ever had, I'll bet on it, dude. Like I can teach, I can teach good. And that's why I have no respect for people like Miss Monica and all these people who who don't care about the kids and just care about, you know, their fucking stupid ass ideology of, you know, learning has to be boring. And and you should make the kids have a fucking miserable time and suppress them from, from any sort of urge to have fun. Everyone close to me who's ever seen me tutor knows I'm damn good at it. I have the energy. I've never, ever gotten tired or burnt out of tutoring no matter how long it's taken. I've genuinely been able to teach people, people who they say, oh, this person is just sucks at this thing. They just can't learn it. I was able to teach them. And I was able to teach them faster than they were able to learn it in school. And I actually enjoyed it. And when I look at people like Zayn Atawala, I think back like, why did anyone give money to this guy? Why did this dude just sit around, do nothing while everyone does their homework and he makes hella bank? First of all, are you not bored? Why don't you actually tutor us? And then I look at the parents and I'm like, how could you be so stupid to send your kids to Zayn Atawala? All he did was get rich off of you guys wasting your time and money. And now look what he does. Just getting richer and richer and richer off of bad labor. He doesn't deserve any of this. He just took advantage of you guys and you guys fell for it. And even me as a child could see through that bullshit. But yeah. I can tutor. I can tutor math really good, really fast. Uh, I really enjoy tutoring science because there's a lot of science that school doesn't teach. Um, sometimes I would teach kids like, okay, like occasional things in coding and uh, how to get good at games and sports. And I would teach them like, <clears throat> you know, the history of like these video games, and things like that. And, uh, you know, how the world works and how adults lie to kids and, and what they actually do and like the R-rated version of history that history class is too scared to teach people about and like the world of music and I play video games with them and, and teach them about cars and teach them about you know how to build a combustion engine and teach them about money and how to be moderate when indulging in pleasures that they're going to encounter when they're older and I was genuinely a good teacher I was genuinely a good teacher like people who have read uh, Onizuka, great teacher Onizuka, who, which is 
one of the most legendary manga of all time, tell me that I'm just like that teacher. Um, but I've never watched it or read it. I'm just waiting for the right time. I'm not emotionally equipped to deal with that just yet. Uh, people have told me I should also watch Quintessential Quintuplets, which I watched a, a few minutes of the first episode and I realized what it's going to be. It's a harem where the dude who is tutoring the girls um, ends up having romantic relationships with the people that he's tutoring. And sorry to say, not sorry actually, I'm not watching that shit. I'm not watching that shit. That goes against like everything that I stand for with teaching. As a teacher, it's not your job to form a relationship. It, it's it's your job. It's self-sacrifice is what teaching is. It's like, it's the, you know, with friends, you, you find a balance. Like, okay, do I push my friend to, to, you know, get his shit together and strive for greatness the same way I'm trying to admire? Or do I value the friendship and, and do I let go, let off the gas when I know I could push him to do better with his own life? And, you know... For like absolute, you know, best, best, best friends that you truly care about, you know, for like family, you push them, you know, you don't, you don't value the feel good of the friendship over the, the potential of their lives. You don't let them live with regrets in the future, right? And that's what you do as a teacher. The only reason why teachers exist in the first place is because parents are too fucking lazy to do their jobs. That's the reason why. That's the whole reason why school exists in the first place. Because parents are like, no, I want all these things so I can, you know, keep pretending to be a kid and all this shit when they should really step up to the fucking plate and have some responsibility and be a fucking parent and teach their kids. Because I'll tell you this, dude, if I'm, a te if I'm a parent and I want my kids to learn something, I don't care if I know nothing about it. I'm going to learn. I'm going to become a fucking expert on it. I'm going to push myself to become the fucking world leader voice on that subject just to teach my kid that and the fact that these other parents don't see it the same way the fact that they're so fucking lazy and they want to still act like kids it's so immature it's so immature and pathetic and i don't know what it speaks to but it speaks to something but yeah i have a lot of strong opinions about tutoring i never liked the idea of you know, keeping kids safe from the outside world and sheltering them and not letting them explore. It's whatever, though. I had my fun and... Especially that one day when I tutored Serena, my cousin. Holy shit, but that's a story for another day. But, yeah, I think a lot of the pictures that I have actually are... And the videos that I have are lost the time. A lot of the a lot of the kids that I would tutor are were literally like... um. I would tutor them for a bit, they'd love it, they'd learn a lot, and the, t the parents would go like, oh my god, this is great, they're doing so good in school now. And then like, a month would go by, and they'd be like, bro, why are you teaching them the fact that like, their parents grew up in India, and they probably smoked cigarettes, and did drugs, and all these things, and I'm like, they need to know. You don't teach them now. When you can teach them the dangers of these things, they're gonna grow up and not know anything about it, and they're gonna do the same thing, they're gonna follow in your footsteps. You don't want them to follow in your footsteps? Teach them. And then um, I would piss a lot of the parents off and they'd take their kids out. And that's why I never made anything of it because I was never a fucking loser, pathetic tutor like Zayn Atawala who would just sit there and just pretend to do work and pretend to tutor kids. No, I was an actual teacher. I was an actual teacher. And I taught better than the teachers in school. And that's why these parents wouldn't let their kids stay with me because they were scared. And you know what? Fuck them. I do have some things though. I have this. Look. Let me open my folder here. Check this out. This is from C2. This is the cubicles. Is there a ninja on here? Anywhere. I'm trying to look. But yeah, I remember these things and 
There might be a ninja on her hair. Is that is that a ninja? I think that is. I think that is. I think that's a ninja. <clears throat> so it was like the sticky note was like vertical like this. There was a face on top with like white and then black. And there were different colors. You know, there was like some black on white ones which she could actually write on, but there were very few and she didn't realize them until she after she brought it and she's like, wait, I can't fucking write on these. But yeah, this was it. This was I just took a picture. This was near the end actually. I don't remember who this kid was, but it was fun. It was fun hanging out with him. Um This was Katie. She'd bring candy all the fucking time. Wait, wait, let me put on my headphones. I wanna hear what she said. Hold up. Here. No, don't draw on the wall. <laughs> oh yeah, this is that same teacher that from from right here, from right here. This is the same one. Where she's like, no, don't draw on the walls. And I was convincing this kid, letting I was telling him, let the intrusive thoughts win. Draw on the walls. <laughs> That's my bag. This is my C two bag. Here. No, don't draw on the wall. <laughs> 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 I did have a I did have a few funny moments there. I did have a bit of a good time. Oh yeah. Wait, wait. Let me see if I can find the ninja monkey. There it is! There it is! There it is! Wait, wait. Oh fuck. How do I zoom in? Okay. Um Tools. Why don't I just fucking Google it? Everybody talks about VLC online. How to zoom in on video VLC. Okay. Media. Playback. It's an interactive zoom, but I don't know where that is. Video. Zoom. I don't want to do this. Video effects. Um, geometry, that's where it is. Interactive zoom. Look at that. So that right there is the ninja monkey, like I mentioned. There it is. There it goes. How do I... There was another, so this was one of the math dudes. Of course, he's an Asian guy. And we also put a ninja monkey in her hair. And we hit it really well. That was Miss Katie's desk right there. She moved around a bit, but that was where it was for the most part. But, um, oh, I have this. That's how I used to look. I was sitting at the teacher's desk. Yep. That's pretty much all I got from C2. Um, do I have anything from Kumon though? Let me check, let me check.
Let's see. Nothing. Oh, I did used to also get tutoring at, uh, what's it called? Global Mall. But... Damn. I guess that's it for the tutoring. Let me get back to, oh, wait. Okay, let me get back to this. <clears throat> okay, so. That was a lot. I don't wanna. I didn't want this to be like a story time thing. I just wanted to show these off. So this is from Score, and my name is still on it. A F R A A Z, and it's a fridge magnet. And we had a lot of these, and we bent them and broke them and stuff. But this is one of the ones where it's like, you know, um, there's like the running one and the cycling one, and there's like different things where it's like as you progress. On the wall, they had like a snake thing, and like snake thing, but like a path. And they're like, oh, this person did these things. We're going to put them over here. And it felt so good. We'd all sit down in like a circle and our parents would come and our parents realized like, oh, they're having fun here. And that means they must not be doing the education that they told us about back in India. So we have to uh, get them out of here and put them in Kumon or something like that. Or Global Mall. And this is, look at this. Kumon Cosmic Club. Space fact. Cos comets are lumps of dirty ice. Dirty ice? Dude, that's a sick way to put it. That's like, you know, dirty sprite, dirty ice. I mean, sure. Dirty ice, dust. You could just say ice, dust. Uh, including ice with dust and rock implies that it, there's impurities in the ice, you know? It's not clean. Most comets move... Oh my fucking god. I, maybe I should have got a better education. Most comets move in long, oval-shaped orbits around the sun. And then... Here, look. Kumon Cosmic Club. And then on the back it says... Card 85. Kib is in Orab and represents her race at the Voltarian Terminal. Orabs are nomadic creatures that bounce around in large herds on rocky hills. So joke's on me. I can hardly read. But, yeah, that's... Um... I don't know. I'll just throw these away. But... Everything I'm gonna just I'll just keep it all right there. Okay. I mean I have to throw this whole box away, so. But this is all of the school-related stuff right here. I have a bunch of things I want to show, okay? Um, let's see. Let's see. What's first? What's first? I guess first I should just pull out these right here. Secretly, a few times in elementary school, as well as a lot in middle school, and also sometimes in high school whenever I'd feel like it, but I had different headphones and earbuds and things like that in high school, and usually in high school I was around just listening to stories. And, and talking to people and making jokes and things like that. And I was on my phone playing games rather than listening to music. But these were the headphones. And these are not the uh, buds that come with it. Look, they're literally not even the same size. You could tell, like, these are clearly replacement buds over time because they've gotten bad. But these are the Clips... K-L-I-P-S-C-H. Uh, I believe they're, like, Swedish or something. Um... 
And these are the best earbuds ever. They're my favorite ones of all time. And they feel amazing. They get tangled really, really easily. Uh, uh, they feel amazing to hold. They feel amazing in the ear. They go deep. Uh, it's probably not good for you. It probably clogged up a lot of earwax over the years. I should probably get it cleaned, actually. But the mic on here was pretty fucking bad, but it worked. Um, and it was crazy technology because there was a pause button on here. There wasn't any volume controls. There was a pause button. So it was... You can hear it. See that? And it was this. Oh, man. It was so cool, dude. It was so cool. I listened to... So like, you know... You develop an attachment to the audio files are different, but normal people will develop attachments to the headphones and earbuds that they have based on the music they listen to through it, not through how it sounds. Um, and, and the music I listened to through this, holy fuck, dude. Like the first time, the first time I ever truly listened to, um, what the fuck is that? Ah, oh, man. That one, um, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy song. What's the what's the track list again? The one with Rick Ross. I forgot the name of the song. I forgot the name of the song. I'm so monster. Yeah, I'm so fucking stupid. Oh man. When I heard that, when I heard the melody and how long the song went on, which it goes on for pretty long, but, and some would say it goes on for a little longer than it needs to. But when I heard that do this, man, I developed a real, like real connection to these, a real nostalgic connection, but, and you know what? I'm going to keep using them. One day I'll do a do a little review on those on those headphones. But they'll get a 10 out of 10. They'll get a 10 out of 10 straight up. Let me clear all my tabs here. Calculator. How to zoom in VLC media player. I'm gonna need to turn that thing off. But shit, what else? What else? What else? Okay, let me let me actually organize this real quick. Wait, I think I, I found some, hold up. What else do I have? I know I have some stuff. I know I have some extra pictures and stuff. Um, I 
Oh, sh I shouldn't. Uh, yeah, I do have some stuff. But this is about all I have. I don't know why it does that, but... Damn, I look at teachers in a totally different light now because I'm and now I'm that age, I'm the age of the teachers. <sighs> okay, I guess we'll start from here, from the earliest, the earliest, right? This is the elementary school stuff, so this was. Look at that. A froze, and it says wolf. Look at that frame rate. That's so smooth when there's like hardly anything going on. Why is the frame rate so bad right now? But then when I do this, it's like flawless. I don't understand. <clears throat> Maybe that's just my view on OBS. Maybe it's like smooth regardless, but this will still fit me. Maybe. I might need to readjust. Hold up. But I was in Boy Scouts. That's what this that's what this means. I was in Boy Scouts or this was like uh before Boy Scouts. This was Cub Scouts. But I think the wolf was I think that was Boy Scouts. Dude, this is fucked. This is fucked. It doesn't fit. That's about as much as it'll fit. And it's open in the back. Yeah, it won't fit. It won't fit. But there it is. Cub Scouts. Maybe I could, maybe I could really, really hold up. Because if this fits, I want to keep wearing it. Maybe if I get rid of some of this inner padding. If I was bald, it would fit. Maybe. Yeah, no, this ain't gonna fit. But these are the Cub Scouts things. I remember when I got these badges, I thought that these were the actual layers I was supposed to be looking at because they felt so nice. They feel so soft. But they look like, they look fucking crazy. But I thought that was like cool. 
Turns out it's the other side. Um, this one's a bobcat, and this one's a tiger cub. I, if I remember correctly, I believe the bobcat is higher than the tiger cub, if I remember correctly. But I'll have to look that up to know for sure. We did a lot of Boy Scouts shit. We went camping and did all that. Went, like, with the fucking, like, school or some shit to, like, you know, the, the Lost Sea in Tennessee and things like that. And did a lot of camping and, like, seeing Ishan with a pocket knife, you know, cutting, like, wood and things like that was so cool. And being around the campfire in tents, sleeping in tents, sleeping on the mud and stuff. All that stuff was so fun, dude. It was so fun. We even did that, like, Kentucky Derby thing where we... Uh, built a wooden car and we won. We raced it. We won. There's a the trophy. My mom has the trophies. We won like first, second, and third place or something like that for like different races. But we have two first place trophies for like two different things in the derby. Yeah. Our car was a fucking beast. I don't think we, I think we just bought like a kit or something. I don't think we actually like made it from scratch. This was a little belt. This doesn't fit me anymore. I know for sure. I could tell by looking at it. This doesn't fit me anymore. It looks like big right here because I'm, it's close up. But like, look. This belt doesn't fit. But this says, it says Tiger Cub on it. That's so cool. It's like embossed in there. My webcam sucks. Simply put. And then there's. Then there's this. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. That's the banana or the Saints logo or the, you know, it's not actually a banana, but, and then that says Tiger Cub. And these are, you know, little bandana things. But you know what? I'm going to use these. I'm going to use these. I'm going to keep these. These I'm going to keep. Everything I'm going to keep, I'm going to put way over here and these I'm gonna throw away <laughs> this I got from the scholastic book fair I didn't get this for has got this but I got a bunch of other things and this is one of those erasers like if you look at this right here see the football like that and because of the way that it is um, and because it's spun like this, you can twist it and all that. Ayo, look at that. But it's used, so it doesn't fit perfectly. But it used to be, it used to actually be a bit longer. Um, or maybe I'm just remembering it wrong. Super smooth. I love the way this feels. But this is an eraser. That's what this is. And, you know, no matter how deep you erase it, it's still going to show the football logo, which that was the whole appeal of this. I think we might have stole this one. No, I don't think we stole this one. I don't, I don't think this one was that good to steal. You guys ever steal stuff from this Scholastic Book Fair? You ain't a real one if you haven't stole something from this Scholastic Book Fair. I stole hella stuff too. I know a lot of other kids did too. And at this point, like for them, it's probably, it's probably not a surprise. Because how many years have to go by where you go like, dog, why are we missing like $7,000 in inventory today? After like, Years and years of this happening, because I know hella people steal shit from that. After like years of that happening, after a certain point, they have to realize like, okay, wait a second. This is what's happening. And they probably take it into like their, um, take it into account with their financials. Like, okay, there's going to be this much spillage. There's going to be this much for this. There's going to be this much for shipping. And there's going to be this much of a loss because this many kids are going to steal this shit. I stole like a, uh, those $100 bill erasers. There are so many fucking cool erasers for like no reason. But, um, I, okay, no, this is, this is not the picture. I'll show, I'll show, I'll show this stuff one day, but I do have some stuff to show, but this, I don't even fucking write anything anymore. I'd love to use it. It's useful and it's a good eraser. This actually works really good, but yeah, no, nah, I'm throwing it away. Perfect landing. This was also from elementary. 
Let me fucking get... Turn this down, bro. That's me. From way back in the day. And this is also me. And now I get why these holes are there. I didn't know why they were there back then. They're for the keychain. But now it makes sense. I still have this shirt. There's more to it. It looks big on me here, but it's too small for me now. But I, it's somewhere. It's somewhere. Um, it's not in my closet because I don't wear it. But yeah, these I'm going I'm to throw away. I don't want any of these. I don't want any pictures of myself. All of the... Um, I don't know, I, I don't know what it does to the brain when you, when you continuously show yourself a younger version of yourself. This has never happened. It's unprecedented in all of human history, and I don't know what it does. I don't know if there's a part of your brain that truly believes that this is real and that you're really looking at yourself like this. And I'm tired of having my thoughts even, even in the realm of the past. I just want to forget. I want to live in the moment, forget about the past, and look forward to the future. And that's why I'm doing all this. Because I want one last look, and then it's all gone. And I'm going to use it, and I'm going to use it till it's, till it's broken and worn out. This, I'm not going to use this. This is cringe as fuck. I would if it was a different silly band. But this is uncomfortable and inconvenient to wear. This is the monkey silly band. There was a bunch of these monkeys, and they were like... Highly sought after, the rare, rare. They were just expensive, really. Uh, it was like $24 for a pack of these, and they would come, there would be like 15 or something in here. But no, for the monkeys, there would be like eight. Yeah, these, were, these were super sought after. And I actually got this in Aloha. I traded someone in Aloha. I had the ring, I had the ring silly band. You know, there were ring ones that was like, those were popping off near the end, right as the trend was dying. Um, and it was a uh, earth. It was a earth. It was so cool. It was so cool. I traded someone because it didn't fit me. I mean, none of these really like fit me, fit me because I'm too skinny for them. But now they fit me pretty well. But back then, shit, dude. I'm glad that trend fell off. And this. Hmm. What shall I do with this? I know what to do. That's it for the stuff from elementary school. And that, that, that was like elementary middle, but actually no, that wasn't middle. Um, this, however, was the stuff from middle school. I mentioned this guy, Adrian Ramirez. Perez. The story of a triangle. This is the paper. This is the original. This is the original as he drew it. The story of a triangle. So, in the first scene, this guy, the squares, the rectangles, are bullying him like, Haha, you're a triangle. And then in the second scene, it's just more of that. It's just more of that. They're like throwing rocks at him or something. And he says, he says, he says, stop pills, PLZ. Stop, please. And then, <laughs> bro, we were looking at this shit. This is, this is SpongeBob humor. This is SpongeBob humor, bro. That's how you know, like, Dude, Spongebob has impacted our lives way more than we actually realize. Um, this is like, you know, Spongebob will show random fucking like weird frames. So this is like a zoom in on the triangle space. And he goes, I need to fight back. And dude, wait, why did we write this? A gun? The next morning, click and he's cocking a gun. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, fuck. He cocks a gun, and the rectangle's like, 
I get him. And then the triangle puts up like sentries and claymores and all that shit. And they're like throwing stuff at him. This is because we were played, we played COD. So we just got the idea from that. And he's like murdering all these squares. And this square is like, help. He said, he said, help right there. And there's like landmines and stuff. And then this guy right here is like, ah, get him. And then there's a slow motion of the triangle of this, like with black bars, like, and then him getting knocked out and it just goes boink. And then the guy in the background is like, yay. Cause they like, they won, the villains won. Damn, we, we could have been mangaka, bro. We could have saved the entire comic industry. This is fucking legendary. And I don't know what to do with this. What shall I do? This is the problem with me. I gotta stop thinking about these things. I gotta stop... Um, holding value for things that are in the past. It's a fun memory and I'll always remember it as a fun memory, but it doesn't need to be there. It doesn't have to always exist, you know? Like I said earlier, all things must come to an end. So yeah, and there's also these. This was from my hoodie. Oh, it's matching my shirt. This is from my hoodie. The uh, aglet on this side is gone, you know, um, inside the hood, like this, how you can pull on it to do the yeet thing. And so someone just pulled it and he pulled it like super hard and the whole thing fell out and we were laughing super hard. So I just kept it. And yeah, that's what this is. This is fun, but I don't, I, I have nothing to do with it. Oh no, wait, I could, I could do this. Oh yeah, wait, I gotta show these two as well. This was a pen that I bought. I didn't know. I wanted to buy it, but I was like, please let me have it, please let me have it. And he gave it to me. This dude named Seth in middle school. Miss Pena's class, the same one I talked about with Ireland Fleetwood in it. And that one had a lot of really iconic people in it. That one also had Carlin. That one also had fucking, um, fucking Ella. Uh... Shit, that one had a lot of people in it. That one had Hunter Brummel. Had a lot of people in it, but it's hard to remember people's names. Yeah, and I already did it, but if you look, if you twist the pen like front like this, it actually works as a pen. But if you twist this part, unscrew it, there is a USB. Two gigabytes. So and you know what? It's not hard to figure this out. It's not like such a big secret. If you twist it the wrong way, the pen the wrong way, accidentally, or you twist it too hard, you might just figure it out. You might go like, oh, let me, and then it's that easy. Yeah, this is stupid. Um, I'm sure at the time it would have been really cool. And it said two gigabytes on here. That's why... I there's a bunch of Sharpie marks on there uh, to cover it up, to make it more spy-like. But this would have been cool at the time when I was in middle school. I'm sure I loved it. Uh, and it was, it was, but I never put anything on it. I never found any use for it. You buy these things with like the hope that you use them when you're an adult because you have an, a vision in your head as to what being an adult will be like. But it's not like that. And it never is. And you never really have a use for things like this. Um, maybe nowadays I might have use for something like this, actually. But two gigabytes isn't, is nothing. And it's heavy as fuck. Um, and this is rosin from orchestra. It's the thing that you take the horse hairs on your violin, uh, s string on the fucking bow on the bow. You know, you have the violin and you take that little bow and you go... <laughs> On this to, uh, to the same way you, you, uh, put chalk on a, um, I mean, people don't really put chalk, 
Same way you might put chalk on your hands or you might put fucking, um, no way it is chalk. Are they both chalk? One is, yeah, the same way you put chalk on a pool stick on the end, or you put chalk powder on your hands to smooth out the thing, or chalk powder on the stick itself, sometimes. Um, but we, we did that a lot, but it was completely unnecessary. This rosin. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna throw this away. This. That was from middle school. These are from high school, however. I mentioned that photography class. This was one of the little capsules. Did I mention in that video? I don't think I mentioned in that video. The capsules that we would have the film rolls in, uh, we would just keep them. <clears throat> and I remember I didn't like tell anyone that I was keeping them because they're so useful. They're completely airtight. They're good for keeping weed in there and stuff. And even though I didn't smoke at the time, I, I knew that I was aware of that. And they were good for keeping all kinds of stuff in there. <clears throat> odor, they're completely like odors trapped in here and everything. So it's really great for that. And I remember I would just keep getting them, keep getting them, keep getting them. Because, you know, you get like four or five a day or whatever uh, in like the later uh, parts of the class. And I would just keep putting them in my backpack. And I remember I had like three on the table and I'm getting, I'm preparing and the dude, Brandon or Brendan, who sat in front of me was like, Oh, let me get those. Let me get those. And I'm like, no, 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 they're mine. Let me get them. I'm putting them in my bag. He's like, what are you going to do with them? I'm like, what are you going to do with them? We both were like on the same page and he showed me his little collection. I showed him my little collection. So we had a bunch of these. This might be the only one that's left. It's good for storing weed. I'm going to give it to my friends. Yeah. I'm going to keep it here so I don't forget because that's where I keep my keys and my glasses when I go to sleep. Um, this was... I drove over this with my car on like the last day I ever went to school, which wasn't the last day of school. Obviously, I told you guys I got kicked out. But I was in the parking lot, and I drove over this, and I'm like, what the fuck did I just drive over? Um, and it was right under my parking spot. It was, like, right behind the uh, my, like, right tire, right front passenger tire. And it's, like, a fucking somebody's, like, brush, like, hair brush or something. But it's not, like, a brush. It's, like, super, super tough bristles. So I don't know what it was for. And I'm going to need to wash my hands after this, for sure. But... Yeah, I don't know what the fuck this was. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it has like all this on it. Um, I just picked it up, put it in my car. And then later on that day, actually, no, I did it the day before. And then the next day I took it. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Let me put it in my car. Later that day, I got called to the office, suspended. And then they told me I can't come back to school. So it's just been in my car. So I'm like, cool, memories. It's kind of a coincidence that it happened on the last day. Because I never like picked up anything like this, you know? This... I know what to do with this. I'm gonna fucking burn this, actually. I'm gonna burn this. Because there's a lot of cool shit that I have that I want to burn. Which, you know what, I'll leave a link in the, to that in the description too. I'll do a little stream of burning it. And then there's this, which is the parking spot that I had. 103. 2017 to 2018. Peachtree Ridge. On the back it says my name. I hung this up on the... Old Lexus. Both of these I'm going to burn. Um, and there's this. Which is, you know, like a key card. But this is for Faison's old neighborhood. Gables used to live there in that apartment complex. I'd go there, I'd drop him off, I'd see weed carpool and stuff. And he gave me this so I can, you know, come whenever, go... Do, to the fucking gym or whatever. Like, he doesn't need to... Because, you know, we we hang out a lot or we go do photography stuff. And instead of me typing in the number to call his mom every time, he'd be like, all right, here, take this extra key and just come in whenever so you can come scoot me. And Because he didn't have a car at the time. 
So I would drive him around whenever we had to like go to Sham or fucking, you know, whatever. Basically, basically just Sham, pretty much. Um, sometimes it was other things. Sometimes like fucking G technique or like car meets and things like that. But it was just more convenient for me to have this. And also I could pull up to the gym, but I never actually did. I only pulled up to the gym a few times, but it was never with this. It was always like he would bring me in. But dude, lots of fun memories at Gables um, around that parking lot and things like that. But coming in my car and lots of tons of tons of talks that we had over there. It was only just recently that we were talking and um, at that Gables place, like in the parking lot and at QT and all this stuff. And now he's got a house, whole house. I was supposed to go out yesterday, but I got busy. But in two days, two days I'm going. No, in two days I might be going to Zob's house instead. But yeah. We still link up, hang out all the time. This is his key. Um, 24592. That's what it says on here. Number on the bottom right there. Um, so yeah, super convenient thing to have. He had one of those remotes, the click, the click ones, so we could do it from a bit of a distance. And yeah, I'm a... this. This right here, what are these? Okay, I have two of each of these. So this is weird. I don't know where the hell, I think I stole this from a teacher. This one says, Georgia State University, Auxiliary and Support Services. Yeah, dude, I never went to Georgia State University and I don't know what the fuck that means. And this one is identical, but it says, PRHS Seniors 2014, which is not my graduating class. I'm 2018. But, yeah, right here. This band says, class of 2018. You can't even fucking read that. I don't know why my webcam has to be like this. Class of 2018. And this one also says class of 2018. I don't know where I got these from because I got kicked out way before the senior picnic or any of those things. So I don't know how I got these. I don't remember. But I don't really care. Um, Oh shit, wait, hold up. I might as well. Mm. Yeah, right there. And this is from college, so... I don't have that much from college, because I didn't care. Um, but this is the lanyard that I got from SCAD. As you can see, it says SCAD on it. Savannah College of Art and Design. This, I don't know if you can unhook. I hate how lanyards are like this and that there's never like a outside layer and inside layer, but it's like they overlap in the end and the inside layer becomes the outside layer and stuff, or the outside layer becomes the inside layer. It's fucking pathetic and I hate it. I don't like that. And I'm never gonna use this lanyard ever again because of that. Otherwise I would still use it because I still have a use for a lanyard. Mine is kind of tearing apart. But, yeah, I ain't going to use this. This, I'm just going to throw away. And same with this, I'm just going to throw it away too, which is Georgia Tech. Afraz Ali. Okay, I'm going to put it there manually. Wait, why am I, why am I worrying about it? It's going to be crushed anyways. Um... What else? I guess there's this, which I did mention I was into science. I like science and I like math. Um, there's these right here. My big science book. And it's just a bunch of experiments. And I did most of these experiments. Some of them are pretty fun. Some of them 
were pretty difficult. Like the um this one was this one was difficult to do. Um the bottle one, this one was really easy, but it didn't actually work all that well. This one with the person inside the bottle and things like that. Yeah, lots of lots of really cool memories, but they're all like gimmicks, they're all like one 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 time things. It's never like a little adventure. Obviously we all did this in school, the uh, vinegar and baking soda volcano, you know, we all did that, but, oh, and the giant bubbles, that one is the most fun, that one is the most fun, for sure, damn, there's this science book, gross anatomy, which, dude, this one, and there was one other one that was so fucking cool, there was like this like skeleton one. Damn, dude, I'm, I wanna find that one. That one was so cool. There was, ah, yes. The science student handbook, which was a bit more than science, but yeah, there was a lot of reading in here. Right, look, body systems. And like, can well, music, right? Fibers and threads. So there's a lot to learn in here. This was one of three books that I would. Okay, like a lot of people, people, people ask me like, how the fuck do you know all these like random fucking facts, right? Just out of nowhere. Um. Like, how, how in any conversation do you just have random facts to give? And and I'll be honest, it's not all that useful of a skill. It's kind of impressive sometimes, but it's not all that applicable in any successful endeavor you want to achieve. Um, unless it's, like, really highly situational. But way back in the day, you know, when you're a kid and you're bored, I was not athletic at all. So what do you do? You go around, you run around, you do fucking cartwheels, you play basketball, do all that shit, right? Not me. Not me. You know where I got my entertainment from? This, this book right here, from reading this whole fucking book, which I only read it like one or two times. I think like one and a half, really. Um, it was kind of sporadic. Um, as well as this book which was even more fun, which is the Science Encyclopedia. And this is, it's got lots and lots of pictures. And it's like really brilliantly done. I love this book. This one is my second favorite one. And this book, just the all around encyclopedia. And this one was the best one because it had all these other interesting topics in there. And it is very science focused. It's very science focused. Like you could see hot air ballooned, Earth going around orbiting the sun, a satellite dish, and then there's a violin football player, uh, a bird, the fucking thing, and then some tribe culture thing, right? But then you look here, there's this architecture, a spaceship, um, a compass, I think, butterfly, flying machine, turbine, uh, leopard and dinosaur so yes it's going to talk about a lot of stuff but it is relatively science focused right and oh man the pictures on here were amazing they were amazing and the descriptions were so good too the black hole uh page on here was probably dude i probably spent like a couple hours just going over reading the black hole over and over and over and over and over again like when i was Man, six years old, six, seven years old, something like that. I would just go through this book. The cell in here also looked really cool. That's where I learned about the cell way before school taught it to me and that sort of thing. But like, look at the pictures. They're really well done. This this one had the best pictures of any of those books. And there, the pictures weren't scattered all over the book, uh, all over the pages, but there were just like one picture or two pictures per page, um, like main ones, but they were so good. Like, look. Look at this fucking eagle. You guys can't even tell because like the, it's, oh, 
Oh, this is genetics. This is not the cell. But the cell looks really cool in this one. Like, look at this shit. Gas and genetics. Like, look at the picture of the cell right there. It's so cool and everything's so colorful. I want to see if I can try to skip to the, the, the pages that I, like, enjoyed particularly. Batat, immune system, Ireland, law, Maya, Maya, Autodesk, and also that, that one Twitch streamer, Miskiff's Girl, X Girl, I guess. Damn, this is, this is crazy going back through. Super, super nostalgic. Telescope. Oh, I missed a... It's got to be somewhere here. Oh, I, I, I opened up to sell, but that was kind of really intentional. Look at the way they drew this. Look at the inside. It looks nothing like any of the diagrams they show you in school. Isn't that cool? You can't even see all the details, but they show you it's super, super detailed. It's like 4K, 8K type shit. And then you go right here and there's black hole somewhere here. L. Oh my God, this was so cool. This was so cool. And they explained it. And nowadays, if this thing would be made, you know, they'd actually show a picture of the black hole that we took. But at the time, this is all we had. In infrared, ultraviolet. Yeah, no, they took it in infrared. Yeah, this is ultraviolet. And there's no hole because the whole thing is emanating so much. There's there's ultraviolet, there's x-rays and gamma rays all being shot out of it, you know? I don't know if there's a gamma ray stream being shot out of this one, but... Um, cosmic vacuum, dead stars, through a wormhole. It's so cool, dude. And I love this book, and that's how I spend my time. That's what I did for pleasure, for enjoyment. Other people would go outside and play, you know, fucking soccer with each other. I was inside reading the fucking encyclopedia, page to page, word to word, front to back. That's what people say. That's what it is. And these books, man, what do I do with these books? Hmm. Yep. No point in keeping these things in my life. And, and when I let go of these things, you know, because I've been doing this for a while, where I take these things that are in my past and I just let them go. The more and more I let go, I feel sad remembering it, but the happier my life becomes when I'm not thinking about it. It's like it makes me freer. It removes some burdens off my shoulders. Oh, these are things you have to think about. These are things that you own. These are things that you have to maintain and manage. And it, it alleviates some of that burden. And I don't have to think about that anymore. And it just makes, it just makes thinking, thinking feel freer and, and flow easier and I'm just, I've learned to let go, and the more I let go of stuff, the happier and happier I become. So, yeah, it is sad to think about, but it's also exciting to think how, because this is the happiest I've ever been. How far can I take this? How, how much contentment can I truly have in my own life? And all of this is being done by Throwing stuff away and giving stuff away. Crazy. There's also this stuff, which, like, regardless of any of this stuff, I was always, you know, as everyone is at, the, at that age, into stories. You kind of, you're kind of trained over time to like, oh, that's so fucking childish or whatever. But like, you know, we were out here getting shit on DVD. There's a lot of DVDs we had, but these were the only two that I actually cared about, like, Keeping as like a, we got this and this, a fucking Bugs Life and the fucking Cheetah Girls. That to tell you everything you need to know about the sheer amount of DVDs we had in all different genres, bro. We had the craziest shit, bro. We had the, we had, you know, we watched, 
we watched as a family, we watched the movie Twilight. You know why? Because we had the book. We had the Twilight book. Who the fuck watches Twilight as a family movie? I was a little kid. Why did we do that? I was bored out of my mind, dude. And I remember we were going to watch the second one too, but we decided not to. Good call by my parents. Um, what else? Let me put all this... Yeah, look. These are some of the things. Look at this. All-time favorite classics from Disney. It's got... The Lion King, that was a fucking... Beauty, it was, it was 101 Dalmatians, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, the Lion King, the fucking Horton, Pinocchio, uh, Ariel, what's it called? Not Ariel, fucking The Little Mermaid. Damn, it's been a long time since I've like seen any of these, really. Uh, Bambi. Isn't there a Bambi movie? I've seen clips and stuff, but I, I really want to watch the Bambi movie. Pocahontas or whatever. Not Pokemon. What what the fuck is this? What is is it? Pocahontas. Yeah. Wait. Did they do anything with Pocahontas? Like, did they ever make a movie out of it or something? Yeah, my mom would read these to me all the time. Peter Pan. I really like Peter Pan. I really like Peter Pan. And then Aladdin. Um, obviously, there's copyright, so I can't show you all these. Alice in Wonderland. I don't remember. That much about Alice in Wonderland. I think by the time she got to this story, I was already asleep. But there's this. There's three Diary of Wimpy Kid books. But they're all the first one. And this one's very clearly read more than the other two. This one's read a bit more. And this one is read the least. But let me see. Interesting. There aren't that many drawings in here. But there's some like... Lots of marks, like nail marks and stuff. But, oh, and a bookmark. But, like a fold in the page. But yeah, there's there's so many other Jai Rupi Kid movie books that we had. Roger Gould's, uh The Last Straw, The Ugly Truth. That was about it, actually. But we had so many different copies that I just picked up these three from our little like library that we had next to my room. We had three of the first Diary of Wimpy Kid books for some fucking reason. Actually, I know why. I know why. I like it so much that every time I saw it for sale, I'm like, I want it, I want it. But we already have it, but I want it. I want to read it again. And, you know, by the time you, you go to high school and get to college, you start actually wanting to, you start going into these things and, and you know, YouTubers will go like, oh, buy these books, you know, uh, with this sponsored by this book. Oh, check out this book. I learned so much from it in storytelling, right? And so you go like, oh, the bare bones camera course for film and video, exposure, composition, basic lighting, basic sequence lighting, and much more. I never read this. There is Anime Impact, which I have yet to read, and I plan on reading, and I'm going to put it to the side. Chris Stuckman, Anime Impact. No books? I mean, no, no pictures? I would expect there to be pictures in Anime Impact, but I'm going to read this. I'm going to put it right there. Um, there is this Understanding Rhetoric, a graphic guide to writing. Interesting. I might read this too. Um... And there's this one for college, Voice and Vision, uh, the third edition. Holy hell, dude. Okay. And then there is this one, which is, you know, the one that all like, a lot of YouTubers talk about this one. The Screenwriter's Bible, sixth edition. I, you don't need to get the sixth edition. Expanded and updated. A complete guide to writing, formatting, and selling your script. Yeah.
cool. That's that. Um, these, I'm gonna throw these away. Don't want them anymore. They're not mine. I might give um the all time the all time favorite Disney classics. I might just give that back to my mom. But that's pretty much all of the school related stuff. Oh wait, there's this. These were the games we were playing back in school. This was like you know, I mean there were games that I played before I went to school, but like these were Nintendo Wii, right? There was another one. Oh yeah, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. See that? Is there anything in here? <gasps> Wait. Spider-Man 2 for the original Xbox is in here. This was such a fun game, dude. This was such a fun game. Damn, and I didn't get to play that much of the story mode, but I loved it. Call of Duty 3 for Xbox 360. NBA 2K Seven. If it'll, yeah. 2K7. Oh, wait, is there anything in here? Hold up. Nothing's in there. Anything in here? Nothing in there. GTA 4. God damn, dude. This shit, this game was so fucking fun. This game was so fucking fun. The amount of laughs I had playing this game, next level. Liberty City Guidebook. That's cool. And of course, the, I don't know what edition this was. Faraz never told me. I never bothered to ask. But it was like a special edition of Halo 3, right? Only on Xbox 360. And it's like a... It's like this, with all this shit inside. Important, insert game disc first. And then there's this side right here. We went, we went there, like, to the fucking, like... A lot of people didn't get to experience this kind of thing. Damn, this is so cool. There's another disc. Halo 3. Dude, this, all this is shit is so cool. Halo Wars 2008. What is this? This book? Whoa, what is this? Whoa, this is... Wait, what? Is this like some deep lore? Grunt. Star position. Tala IV. Satellites. Buon. Pad pad. Gravity. 0.709 G approximately. This is so cool. Brute. There's a brute right there. Jackal. Oh, the prophet. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, that looks like their planet. Drone. Hunter. Elite. Pure form. What's that? Grave mind. Oh shit. Extra galactic question mark. That's so cool. Surface temperature negative 25C to 41C. Population unknown. Societal approximation. Utopian socialism question mark. Government N slash A. Current threat to array. Significant to serious. The grave mine. This is that flood monster. And there's no picture of the world. That's so cool. 
human reclaimer. Ooh, what? That's Master Chief. Engineer. Whoa. Damn, I wish I saw this sooner. I'm just now seeing this. But yeah, this is like that special edition of Halo. And listen, if you never went to a midnight release of anything, you missed out. Because they don't do that kind of stuff anymore. Because everyone buys all their games online. And it's a world long gone, right? But it's just a shame. It's a shame to think about. It's a shame to think about how that doesn't exist anymore and it'll never come back. You can go back and watch all those videos of how fun it was and how happy people were going to like the fucking like Modern Warfare 2 midnight release at GameStop and everyone's like lined up for like fucking miles and everyone's like losing their minds. Hey, yeah, we're going to fucking play this game. And then you, like you see pro promotional material and, and like hype for games used to be so, you, it wasn't as big, but it was so wholesome. It was so community driven. It was so like, Bro, look, we got the fucking rock playing Halo and shit like that. And it was it was totally different. And of course, you know, Halo, Ghosts of Onyx, which I read a few pages of, but I'm not reading this. These I will throw away. The Halo I'll probably need to give back to Faraz because I don't think he'll want to throw it away. Um... And lastly, there is this. Oh, wait. I gotta do one thing real quick. I gotta send that to someone. Lastly, this is this is like the last thing from school. There is this right here. Back in Woodward in second grade. At the end of second grade, spring 2008, Woodward North. Oh man, yeah, it was called Woodward North. That was the name of our campus. There was like Woodward, Maine, which was the campus we were gonna go to after sixth grade. Um and then for outstanding achievement. 425.08 and this also has 2008 on it and it's a trophy and then there's these stars right here and this one is broken off it, bro it felt it broke off in the car on the way there this is a lot smaller than I remember I remember like sitting in the car and like it like coming up to my head like this thing was huge um and on top this is a this is a king and this could be like for anything um but there's a cross and a king, and it looks really, really cool. Lot, lots of detail. Lots of detail on, like, the king's head and stuff. You know, there's, like, a jewel up here in his crown and stuff. So, yeah, this was what I got for winning the chess thing. Um, I started playing chess. I played chess throughout that entire school year. I would go to the daycare, like, once a week or so. I'd play chess over there. Um, so it was from the time I was seven to the time I was eight. So I learned chess when I was seven, and by the time I was eight, and I competed in this uh, tournament near the end of the school year, um, I won third place in our, our division, which was uh, like second graders to fourth graders, I believe. Which means I won third place even out of all the fourth graders. I crushed all the fourth graders. I remember there was, there was one fourth grader who won first place. Um, no surprise there. And there was, I believe, a second grader who won third, second place, but I don't remember who it was. I think it might have been 
See, I don't think it was her. There was this girl who actually beat me. Um, I don't I don't think she won second place. Otherwise, I wouldn't remember that. Otherwise, I would have been like, oh, it's that fucking girl. But I, I... It wasn't her, but I don't recall anyone else in the grade level who was able to beat me like that. Her name was like Cassie, I think. So if you... You know, if you know anyone in, in Wood who went to Woodward Academy in, in, you know, Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia, in 2008, and there was a girl named Cassie or Cassidy, something like that, then that was her. Um, and I still had a winning record against her. Like, I beat her in, like, you know, out of, like, we might have played, like, 15 or so games. I beat her in, like, 10. The others were draws. But I remember one game she beat me, and that's the thing. Nobody in my grade level was able to beat me. Like, nobody beat me even once. And so when somebody beat me one time, which she, I was, and I was, like, trying. I was, like, okay, let's play, let's play. And halfway through the game, I'm, like, what the fuck is going on? I, like, can't do anything. And she beat me in that game, and I was, like, okay, this is fucked up. There's, this doesn't make sense. There's no way this fucking dumb bitch should be able to beat. Like, that's what I was the thought process going in my head. And, yeah, I won third place. When I was eight years old, I was a 1400 is what they told me. I was a 1400 in chess after playing it for about a year, which is not, um, it's good. It's good. Um, I'm not going to fucking like try to act like I'm some humble, like I'm aware that that's good, but it's no, it's not on track to be grandmaster and starting to play chess. It's learning the rules at seven is you're kind of a late bloomer in the realm of top chess, you know? Top chess players usually have parents that, you know, get them to learn chess very, very early on. Because it's a very simple rule set to understand, simple game to get into, low skill uh, floor. So you can get kids any age. But yeah, this was that. And I was in the car on the way back with Faraz, Ishan, Iman, Ghosh. It was Ishan's car. I was sitting in the back. And uh, maybe there was another person with us, but it was either Ishan or Iman that was like, uh, here, I have Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I'll trade you. And he had the disc in the car. He's like, I have Modern Warfare right here. I'll trade you. And I'm like, shit, bro, that sounds like a good trade to me. And I gave him the trophy and he gave me the thing. And then um, everyone was like gassing me up in the car. They were like, hey, you're the fucking man. They're all older than me. They're all four years, three, four, five years older than me. Um, all the kids that I carpooled with because they were all my brother's friends and cousins and things like that. I was like the baby of the group. Um, and I still am, like, I'm still the youngest in my entire generation. And every time I go to any family thing or my friend, brother's friends or anything like that, I'm always the youngest one. So they were all gassing me up and this dude like took the trophies like, hey, Faraz, look what I got. Look what I got. And then Faraz looked, he's like, hey, give that shit back. Give, give him back his game too. And But I would have done it. I genuinely would have taken that trade. You can have the trophy, bro. I want, I want the game. I want to keep playing the game. I think that speaks to something about me. I don't care so much about the destination. I just want more of the journey. But I think that's just a... doesn't speak anything about me. I think that speaks about a successful mind state, you know? The person who enjoys walking is going to walk further than the person who enjoys the destination. Just that simple. So, I just want to play. I don't enjoy chess like that. I think... um. Once you reach a point where the growth is no longer uh, rapid, which usually happens pretty early on, after about a year of playing, you reach some sort of a stagnation where if you really want to try to grow, you can't just play to grow. You have to practice and it's effortful. At that point in playing chess, that's not my realm anymore. Um, anybody who, who is going to get through that, who's not going to drop off in, in playership after that, is going to be people who hate losing more than they love winning. You look at all top players of any discipline. They don't necessarily love winning that much. They just hate losing. And I don't hate losing. I don't care about losing. I just love winning. So, but that's not, that's not the mindset that'll take you to the top, honestly. It's not. It's a mindset that'll bring you happiness, I believe. But there's a difference between... Pursuing happiness and pursuing greatness. Two different games. But yeah, this is... I'm probably going to have to give this to my mom. I don't think she's going to let me just get rid of it. Let me get rid of it. As if it's even mine to give. 
Um, what else do I have? I have some stuff. There's some trash right there. Um, I have some... Ooh! What is... I was gonna... Wait. This is perfectly ordered. I put stuff in each stack. This is literally ordered in the perfect way. I don't even need to change anything. Oh wait, I gotta show this from school. I gotta, sh I forgot to show this. So I explained, I must have talked about Miss Mallory, my AP psychology teacher back in high school. I had her, Faison had her, Nair had her, and before Nair there was another dude that knew Nair. And I'm pretty sure after Faison there was another dude that probably knew Faison that had her. But she transcends all this stuff. Her mugshots are no longer online. I can't find them. Just like how I can't find Isan Laiwala's mom's uh, mugshot online. But so, by the fucking grace of God, I had it screenshotted. That's her. Michelle Leah Mallory Gwinnett. What? I forgot. Purchase or possession of alcohol by minor? Wait, so she was a minor when she... Oh. She doesn't look like a minor. She looks like a 40-year-old crackhead. No, she doesn't look like a 40-year-old crackhead. She looks like a minor meth head. Dude, I don't know what it is with the artifacting of this picture. This must have been a long time ago. But, yeah. This is her. I am not showing the fucking screen. Here you go. Here it is, Miss Mallory. Click here to unpublish this record. I'm sure she did that. Because we all knew about it and we spread it around the school and everybody talked about it. Hotpublication.com And this was her thing. But yeah, teachers are not what they used to be. First of all, if you're still in school, I'm, I'm about to enlighten you. English teachers are hoes. You know the hoes that you see in school growing up? They end up becoming English teachers. Like, social studies teachers are a mixed bag. And the science teachers are the ones who are, like, curious and fun. You know the kids, um, the kids that you see who, like, you know, are a bit rebellious. They might want to have a bit of fun. Uh... Math teachers are either, like, the girls that are, like, complete fucking bitches to everyone or, you know, dudes who are, like, you know, giga chads or dudes who are, like, fucking losers or whatever. But every time there's an English teacher, that's why they're always fucking pregnant. That's why. Because they're just fucking all the time. They're hoes. English teachers are literally hoes. <sighs> Man. Do I have anything else? I think I'm... Okay. Yeah, no, I don't have anything else. Not for now. Not for now. But maybe for later. But yeah, uh, th there's a little bit of enlightenment for you guys. Look at the girl. Look at the girls around you. Look at find out who are thoughts. Right. Whoever the school thoughts are, they're the ones that end up becoming English teachers. And look at their grades. And look at the way they take notes. And look at the way they participate in English class. And you'll see what I mean. You'll see. You'll see. That's why they're always fucking out because they're pregnant or they're always out doing some shit. They always use all their vacation days. They don't save it up till the end. My math teacher, Coach Hannick, he was like, I'm not using any of my vacation days because if I don't use any, uh, the last year of uh, fucking like school, the last year I'll have of teaching, I'll literally take the entire year off, every single day off and get paid for the whole thing if I use all my vacation days. And he said he has that deal with the school and he's not using any of them. So no vacations other than like, you know, the actual vacations, which doesn't exist outside of school. So it's weird that adults just get to take those vacations. But, um, yeah, the, the, the fucking English teachers, you're going to get the most subs with the English teachers. And now you know why. Now you know why. Let's see. Anything else? 
I used to pee in cups for people to, for them to pass drug tests in high school. At the time, there was like a, a $200 cup street value, but yeah, now it's... And I would do it for free. I would do it as a gift. What the fuck was wrong with me? I was a responsible person. I just wanted to help out. I was so... I carried so much responsibility with me that I was willing to disperse some of that. I was always designated driver for other people who got drunk. I would I would do so well on the test that I'd let other people cheat off my tests. Like, I let people cheat off me in drug tests. That's literally what I did. It extended, but yeah. Fun times, fun times. Some of them were not so fun times. Lots of tutoring, lots of fucking bullshit in school that I had to deal with, but I rebelled a lot and pushed back and I'm glad I did. I didn't end up as successful as I thought I would doing all this shit. I didn't end up as the fucking, you know, high school dropout who turns billionaire. But I'm 22. Who knows what's on the horizon? And I don't want to talk about this because there's no point. Because everybody will assume that you're talking about this because you had a hard time. I got bullied, but I also bullied other kids. I bullied a lot of other kids far more than I got bullied. But I would bully them not in the, like, shoving them in the locker room way. I would bully them by, like, hacking their social media shit and things like that. But I'll save those stories for another day. I would bully anime kids, actually. Kids who watch anime. Even though I watched anime, that's the beauty of anime. That's the beauty of anime. Now it's changed, though. Now you can't bully kids for watching anime anymore. I was talking to my little cousin... Shania, uh, she's 11 or 12. She's like 12. She's 12. She's 12. Maybe not. Now she's probably 13. But she was telling me and her friends are into like Demon Slayer and One Piece and all this shit and fucking Hunter Hunter and all that. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? These girls don't actually like these shows. They just watch them because the guys watch them. That's why. They all, they're all obsessed with Naruto. And that, that's fucking telling because none of these guys even like Naruto. Bro, most guys don't like Naruto. They like the concept of Naruto and they like what it did for them as a child. But the show itself is fucking garbage. It's really, it's poorly executed. These girls are literally just cat. They literally just cat. Things have changed. Now you, now it's like anime has become like normal mainstream and it's like cool to like anime. But back then... No, back then, nobody really cared, honestly. People cared if you were a weeb. I'm sure it was different before me, um, but in my era of going to school, liking anime wasn't so bad, um, but a lot of people, people were like fucking running around the halls doing Naruto runs and like fucking yelling in the hallways, yelling like, notice me, senpai. What the, that shit? Yeah, now that I think about it, well-deserved. That bullying was well-deserved. Fuck those anime fans, bro. Y'all are weird as fuck. Anybody who ever said, notice me, senpai, even in any context, even the way I'm saying it right now, y'all are fucking losers. Me included. But I want to show this. That's, that's, that's where I want to end it. With school shit, I don't, I don't, there's nothing else to say about school. 